Hey, what's up, chess familia? Oh, kind of a weird delay there. Uh, anyways, awkward. Alright, we're playing as black. We're going to play the Karl Khan, as usual. I'm going to play this opening until I reach at least a thousand. Uh, as long as the opponent plays e4, of course. Uh, so he's playing this move. It's funny, I was actually playing with my dad yesterday, and we had this exact same opening. Um, so d5 is an option. He gets the, uh, what's called the ampassant, and then you kind of have to retake. I don't know exactly what the play is here. Mm, you kind of get into a weird situation here, because if you retake with the pawn, he gets like an early check, but you can just block it with a dark square bishop, and then get the knight out and castle really fast. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if going on d5 in this particular case is any good. It kind of kills the whole vibe with the Karo Khan. Mm. What's the idea here? What's the idea here? e6. I think e6 is a misplay. Yeah, I don't know. I know he gets the Ampassant. I'm sure he'll go for it, but I'm just going to recapture on e6 with the pawn. Maybe it's actually better to take with the queen if he ampassants. I wonder. Learn about this move. We were expecting that. Yeah, I don't know what's better, taking with the queen or taking with the pawn here. I think this pawn's more valuable. I mean, you can always just tuck this queen back into like c7, right? This kind of blocks a dark square development, but then again, you can just develop to e7, I think. Yeah, I don't know what's better here. I actually had pretty good luck. Yeah, we played this exact line. I played this exact line here yesterday with my old man. And I took out the pawn and I had decent success. I think the thing that, um, I had like this really funny line where I went like a5 check if he pushes e uh, d3. Uh, so there could be some funny business. I'm just going to take with the pawn. I know he might go for the check, but um, I'll just block with the dark square bishop if he ends up going for that. It's funny. I had this exact same game last night. This is so funny. Oh, <laughs> uh, how funny. I'm going to get the knight out and try to harass this queen a little bit. I'm waiting for him to take his queen out or get his dark square bishop out to like here. Yeah, I want him to play uh, g5 with his bishop so I can look for the check and then just scope this. Well, I have to be careful in that case. Yeah, see, I don't love e7 without the pawn on e5. Bishop e7 without the pawn on e5. Mm, because after castles, the queen's going to be the only thing defending it, so it's going to be kind of awkward. But maybe now is a good time to get the light square bishop out. I'm just going to go for it. Play developing moves. The opponent's taking like no time at all to think about these moves. So far, so good. And I would just love it if he threw his bishop out here. There we go. This is so funny. This is... I guess he could always just bring his dark square bishop out. Or back. But hopefully he just pushes with the pawn. If he pushes c3, it's literally going to be the exact same game that I played last night. That's so funny. I've like never had this happen. <laughs> okay, so he plays that move, which is a bit better. Um, what did I do? I think I went like, I think I went like queen d5 here. I think that's what I played. Hmm. What did I end up playing?
b5 just seems like a really bad square for the queen. Then again, it would kind of mess with his pawn structure a little bit. Yeah, he could push c4. That would probably push me back. I feel like I'm just going to be wasting a lot of moves if I go b5. I'm just going to go b6 and just threaten the pawn and the rook here. Um, but I probably want to castle up like pretty fast. Only thing that really sucks right now is that my uh, dark square bishop is going to be kind of in a bad spot, so I'd probably have to get the rook out to like e8 shortly thereafter. Yeah, I was really hoping he would kind of blunder and push c3 there, but eh, it just didn't happen. Oh well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to castle. Yeah, I need to get the knight out too. Okay. Mm, I think e8 is the play. Either get the knight out or get the rook out. I'm not going to lie. I kind of misclicked that, but uh, I was actually thinking that was going to be an okay move anyway. Oh, well. Yeah, I basically have to get this knight out. Okay, so he's going to be looking for um, the pin here. Well, not looking for the pin, but he's going to put his dark square bishop on h6. So I believe... Uh, I think actually knight h5 is like maybe a move. I don't think it's the best move, but I think g6 just has to be played here. Yeah, he's going to play h6 next. I'm just going to play g6. Ugh. Yeah, my knight's in a terrible spot at this point. I could go h5, try to attack his knight, but it's just such a bad spot for the knight. I'd rather keep it somewhere more centralized. Um, and also, I really need to just play knight d7 already. And just connect the rooks and just start moving the knight around. It's just in a really poor spot. I don't really think it matters which way the knight goes at this point. My um So my Dark Square Bishop is loose at the moment. That's something I want to keep in mind. I wonder if I want to get the rook out and just protect the dark square bishop or just get the knight out. Probably don't need to think about it too hard. Probably just play this and be okay. Okay. So I'm expecting him to move his light square bishop somewhere so he can attack this bishop. So there's one of two options. We can either go for the trade here. Um, and then I'm actually threatening his rook after that. I don't love that move. I'd rather just get the rook out to e8. I think that's a better idea. Also sort of prevents... Hmm, I don't know. Mm. I think rook e8 has to get played. I wouldn't mind trading off dark square bishops here just because there is a chance for him to get his bishop on h6 and his 
queen like onto g7 or something like that. I know it would take quite a few moves to get there. Um, but it is an option that he does have. I'm just going to play e8. I don't know. It just seems better. G one two one seven from India. I mean, the knights are protecting each other now. People tell me that this knight protection idea is like not that great. Um, I think I'd be okay to trade off here at this point. I mean, this is protected. Let's see if he takes. If he takes the knight, it's not very good. I'm just going to win his rook. Mm. Could also block this in, too. This would force him to run. It seems like a poor pawn move, though. I also do have this move, which is like really strong. Or is that strong? I mean, no, it's not that good because he can just retake with the queen and then I just trade a bishop for a pawn, which is bad. I think I'm just going to play this. The knight's already protected on f6. I honestly feel like at this point he should just play like Bishop h5 or something. Yeah, I need to move his queen around. This pin is annoying. Maybe this trade's not that good. Maybe pushing the pawn up was better. I need to defend this knight too, just to be safe. Well. Yes, yeah, this is what I was wonder like trying to avoid, but um yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to think like too hard about this. His rook is attacked, so he's going to have to... Yeah, he, I mean, he was, that was basically like a forced trade there. Hmm. I, wonder how I, can I, I wonder how I can start attacking this. To attack his knight, he has... Maybe I attack his knight, but what's my follow-up after that? His pawn's really weak. I just want to attack his queen so bad. Hmm. He goes e4, I just trade off here. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to try this. It doesn't seem too bad. I kind of want to get this knight off of f6 at this point. 
Uh, that's really frustrating. Um, I suppose I could offer kind of an exchange of pieces here. I think my position's a little bit better. Um, I could offer the exchange with like d4, and then I'm, uh, let's see, I should be winning. So if I go d4, he takes, I take, and he has to move his uh, light square bishop somewhere. Then I can always retake his knight too. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just going to offer the exchange here. Uh, but I think he wins a knight. No, but I win his bishop, though. Hmm. Maybe this was a mistake, d5. I guess we'll find out. I may have miscalculated here. I think I should be winning his light square bishop here. Mm, but I might be doing it at the cost of a knight, so it might, might come out to be an even trade, but we'll see. I honestly could have just moved the queen back too. I think I had a lot of moves here. Maybe b4 was better here. Yeah, he can win a knight, but I can win his bishop, which I feel like is going to be better here. Yeah. So let's think about this. I can take take the bishop check. Oh, he has check on the next move, and then it's a fork, so I'm almost tempted to just go this way. He has f3 and then the fork, so I don't want to lose that way. Well, this is check. He'll either be forced to take, and then where do I go with my rook at that point? I'm just going to offer this. I think I have to go e7 next. I need to um, keep the defense here, um, but I can't let him go f3. Maybe I should just move my king up or something. No, wait, this is just bad. I've gotten myself into a bit of a pickle. I think I'm just losing a knight. I think I kind of screwed this up. Oh, no, still, I can't let him go f3. Mm, I think I've kind of screwed this. Um, this is fine. This is just a trade, so... Kind of a boring game of trades so far. Oh, I guess I'm... Oh, right, 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 right. So I just basically lost a knight. <laughs> so that was kind of stupid. Well, no, either way, I'm still re recapturing this knight. Even if he takes, takes mine, I'm getting his. There's no reason for him not to take here. I 
Well, my pawn is slightly more advanced, so that's cool. Ah, three moves. Jeet, what's it going to be? Yeah, so I thought I screwed it up for a bit. I thought I was losing a knight, but I think I calculated it. Okay, I'm glad I noticed the fork here. Um, that basically would have thrown the game. Okay. Okay, so I guess he wins a pawn. So... Maybe it's time to start pushing pawns here. I have to go back and protect the F file. He could fork these pawns here. I'm not going to have a great way to stop it, so I'm just going to move my king back. Yeah, I got to just start pushing pawns up. Saw that coming. Hmm. Probably push B5 here. Okay, so he's just looking for the battery here. Hmm. I mean, where can he really go? I suppose I have to protect over here on f7. Hmm, I could push this pawn too. Yeah, where's he really going to go after that? I guess... Hmm. I think it's okay. He's still not really attacking anything besides this pawn here. See how this goes. Oh, maybe I could have. No, I couldn't really fork. Work these. Hmm. Not quite sure what he's planning here, but I think he has to get his pawns involved. Ah. Looks like I'm losing a pawn this way. Mm, it's a bit of a bummer, but I don't think it's the end of the world. It's, he's going to disconnect his rooks here. Yeah, maybe I'm misplaying this, but...
think I'm doing okay. I think I think I'm in a better position here simply because my rooks are sort of behind my pawns. So, but I did lose a pawn, which is not great. Hmm. I have a check here. Hmm. Could win a pawn potentially, right? Yeah, because he can't defend both of these. Oh, but he can go here. Even then, I can just go f8, f8. Yeah, I saw that coming. I still think I'm better off because I have my rooks on the back rank still. Yeah, I don't know. He hasn't gotten his king or his other pawns involved here, but then, then again, so I haven't either. He'll probably start pushing this pawn, I imagine. The D pawn. I don't think he's going to go for the trade. This is kind of where my knowledge of endgames kind of falls apart. <laughs> I figured that was going to happen. I'm just gonna try something here. Oh, maybe I just blundered. Oh, I think I just blundered that. Hmm. Okay, so you guys keep telling me to just put a rook behind the pawns and push. Now the only bummer part about this is that I can't really attack his other rook at the at this point. Could attack this way. Yeah, kind of a fun end game. Let's see, which way do I want to go? Probably up the H file here. There's a slim chance that he blunders. I wonder if I push F5 or G5 here. Hmm. 
I'm just going to attack and force his rook to move around. It's going to be tough to win. It's, it's going to be really tough to win. This is probably the biggest threat right now. Yeah, I figured that. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge for sure. <laughs> Maybe I just offer the exchange here. Oh no, that's not really an exchange. No. I could pin his pawn here. Yeah, I could pin it to win it. I could pin. I'm going to try it. If he pushes, I just take. This would be pretty good. I think f5 is next. If we can at least trade off one rook and I can get his D pawn, I think we'll be in like a decent shape at least. Yeah, pinning this pawn seemed like the play. But yeah, it's it's still gonna be really, really tough here. Really tough. I think if I go F5, he'll probably be tempted to either check or play oh interesting you want to go there i'm just going to play a threatening move and just threaten to take his rook here but even this is going to be really tough now he'll just run his uh maybe i should have pushed the pawn up here well no then i just would have lost it Hmm. Well, fun end game though. I don't get to practice like too many end games like this, so this is good. Yeah, see now I think this is good because I get to offer the exchange here. Yeah. So that was a good move. I think king e5 or uh, excuse me f5 was definitely the play here. I think that's the one move that might give me a chance here. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. I don't think that was a good move. I think he should have just went for the rook exchange. Hmm. Maybe it was a decent move. Either way, he has to go for the rook exchange here. Right? Yes, yeah, so this had to be played. Hmm, I see. He'll probably play h8. And then I think he's going to be able to run this pawn down. 
So maybe I just trade rooks off here. Hmm. Yeah, he'll play h8. Um, I'm going to be forced to go g7. g7. He'll probably have to swing his rook out to here. But then, even then, if he pushes his pawn up, I'm just going to win it. Hmm. So what do I do? Maybe I start checking him. Maybe I go for the pawn here. No, he's going to be able to win my pawn here. Um, yeah, I don't have, I, I don't want him to win this pawn. I think we have to go for the exchange here. But then again, I want to keep my pawn back here. Hmm. How do I prevent him from winning this pawn? My rook is the only defender here. Maybe I just trade it off. Hmm. I don't know what's more threatening, this pawn or this pawn. I'm just going to threaten to take. I mean, if he takes, I can just take back. I'm, I'm going to be forced to play g7 here, right? If he wants to take this one, so be it. I think I'll have better luck on this side of the board. Either way, we're probably just losing a pawn apiece here. Really? It just seemed like a blunder, I don't know. Yeah, that, that seemed like a really big blunder. Uh, I, I don't know what that king move was. He didn't really threaten anything. I thought he was going to go f8. Yeah. I think we're just winning here. He can't protect. He can't protect this pawn anymore. So I think he blundered. Or was it? When he played king e e2, I think he blundered. Yeah. I think he had a really good chance up until king e2. King e2 was too passive. He, I think he had to threaten this piece right here. Um, this is fine. This is protected, so I'm just winning a pawn here. He can't take because my king is defending there. Um, that's fine. This just loses a really valuable pawn. Yeah, I know he can take here, but I can just protect my king. So, honestly, an exchange of rooks would be like really good here. Hmm. Should I get the pawns off of the same file? Yeah, I want to offer the rook exchange here. If he goes for the check, I'll just move back. If he wants to take the pawn, I capture. So I know these are on the same. Yeah, this is fine. I'm going to offer the exchange here at this point. Pretty sure I'm just winning here. Wow. Well, he doesn't want to take that, so I'll just go protect. I'll push my king up one more square. Hmm.
tricky. It's definitely tricky. Hmm. I have to protect this pawn, huh? Do you have the check here? I don't know if the check is the play. No, I can't check that. No, the check here on f3. That's what I meant. I don't think it's that good, though. It just pushes his king away, and then he can bring it right back, right? And then I still have to defend this. Hmm. H5. Ah, oh, shite. Ah, oh, shite. Well, here comes the trade. I'm pretty sure my pawn can just advance, though. You know, maybe that was actually a good thing. Maybe he kind of blundered there. Now his um. Now he's kind of forced to take. Yeah, his his rook is pinned now. I kind of blundered that, but his rook is pinned, so we kind of have to force the exchange here, and then I'm just running my pawn up the board faster. Yeah. Okay. So this is looking good. This is looking good. That was a tactical blunder. King h5. <laughs> he has nowhere to go. He has to trade these off. So. The thing is, his king can still reach, the, reach this pawn faster. And I can't quite... Um... Yeah, this honestly might just come down to a draw. Yeah, I think this might be just a draw, sadly. His king can still reach my my pawn. Or no, it can't. No, it can't. No, I'm just winning here. Never mind. No, no, no. I'm advancing first. Never mind. Well, I guess it's just a draw, isn't it? Yeah, unfortunate. It's a draw. Ah, uh, it's a bummer. Yeah, it was like one square too far. Yeah, it sucks. Man. Ugh. All that. All that for a draw. Well, we basically played about the same. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with this one, considering we basically had the same accuracy, more or less. We ended up with the exact same game rating, and then he had a really big advantage in the middle game. And then um, I was able to at least equalize the position, even if there was one or two accidents in the end there. So, a bit of a bummer, but I think where I messed up was when we did the exchange with the knight on e2. Um, I miscalculated that, and I think that's where... I think the knight move... Yeah, I should have taken with, with the rook here. Yeah, it would have prevented this situation here. Yeah, so this is kind of where it fell apart. Oh, also he did kind of just have the attack on the rook on a8. He could have he could have won this rook. I don't think he saw this. But that probably would have been uh wouldn't have still been even. No, he does still have the big advantage here. And then he would have been up too. Okay. Well, let me just do the review. I wonder about this move. 
Okay, so it looks like d5 was still viable. Getting the knight out. Not sure, so maybe reinforcing the center earlier. Ah, so the check here. Yeah, I should have noticed that, huh? Hmm. Oh. Couldn't he block in with a dark square bishop there, though? Oh, yeah, I guess he could, right? But even then, I'm still just winning a rook. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, I should have recognized this. That was really, really poor judgment. Okay. Yeah, that, that would have been a huge advantage there. Okay, rookie eight was the idea. So offering the trade here was at least the right idea. Oh, sure. Just attacking his knight. He would have been able to defend. That square so easy. So this is the big blunder, huh? I did think about b4. Why, why is b4 actually good, though? Well, crazy. This was a bad idea. Yeah, I should have just moved the queen here. Um, I think there was no need to play d5. Um, yeah, I was just kind of taking a long time to play my moves here and I wanted to just try to simplify the game off since we were so e uh, so even. Let's see what the advantage could have been here. And then what does he play? He plays takes. Okay, and then I'm guessing he just attacks, yeah, and I'll probably just fall back to what, c3? Yeah, okay. Sure. Knight of six check. And then what, g7 attack. And then where does he go after that? Knight e4. Okay, so I guess we could even just trade off here, huh? Probably no reason to, though. Okay. Even he, even though, like, we, we would have been in a, a even position here. Right, okay, so taking with the knight. I need to rethink why this is winning. Why is taking the knight here so bad? You miss an opportunity to move a knight to safety? Hmm. Is it not just trading off though? Rook takes? Hmm, bummer. Okay. Well, oh well. Uh, I want to see the moves for this position here. Okay. Interesting. Got it. Yeah, giving away the free pawn didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I mean, I know he gets a pawn back, but I felt like... He gave me an advantage there. Hmm. I see. Okay, he's still up two points though here. I just want to see something. So he was only up one pawn here. Now he was up two. Okay, so I kind of blundered this okay so capturing this pawn was a mistake i see hmm. Okay, yeah, tried to kick the rook there, or tried to attack the rook there. Okay, protects f6. Okay, this pins the pawn. 
Yeah, I thought that was good. Honestly, I thought this B6 move was sort of the best idea that I had to try to convert an advantage. Um, because it really locked in this uh, this past pawn here. So as soon as he moves it, I'd be winning the rook. So it kind of forced his rook into an un uncomfortable position. And honestly, I thought F5 was like the best thing to play here. Since it sort of attacks the rook and he can't capture the pawn right away. But I guess engine thought otherwise. But I don't know, this, this just seemed bad. Um, I figured he would have taken here, so... I don't know why the engine recommended to take there. I'm surprised f5 wasn't a better move there, but what do I know? h6 is a great move. Yeah, that was the only move, really. It's hard to play a great move when there's only one viable move on the board. I thought king e2 was like the worst thing he played. Yeah, this was probably the best move. Um, I've had games and games before like this where there's a few spaces or one space that separates my pass pawn from the opponent's pass pawn. And I've always noticed that the engine recommends to just get your rook in between those. So you can attack his pawn and defend yours at the same time. So I'm starting to kind of get that concept. I wonder if pushing with the king here would have been better. What does he play here? F3. Yeah, defends. Attacks. It's such an even position here. It just it would have been so difficult to convert that. Hmm. Pushing the rook up. Yeah, I wanted to get the trade going. Looks like he had other plans in mind. Yeah, he found the move. Um, If this pawn would have been one square up, I think I would have been able to win. Or if my king was on the opposite side. Maybe it would have been better to get my king onto like the F file instead of the H file there when he had his G pawn or uh, his H pawn or whatever that was. But yeah, oh well. Rough game. Uh, I miscalculated basically one exchange there on E2. I think if I would have taken with the rook, it would have been better. Um, obviously a miss. And then I probably shouldn't have offered the queen exchange so early as well and just brought the queen to a safer spot but overall i'm pretty happy with how this one went um i mean it ended in a draw and i came back from a really losing position i mean he had a plus four point advantage here so i guess i'm i'm happy with the draw it's a bit of a bummer to sink so much time into one game but uh i didn't lose any elos so what can you do so no complaints there but anyways, thanks guys for watching and see you in the next one.